All right, so um, let's talk about acceleration. Now, usually when we've been talking about motion, pretty much everything has been in terms of time, right? Which makes sense because you think about, you know, you're running along a path or some vehicle's moving along, you want to know, you know, at which point along its journey, how fast is it going? Um, that's the kind of natural way to think about it. Um, but now we're going to sort of shift away from that and we're going to look at not only um, some more complex situation that um, involve forces and acceleration, which is the topic of mechanics that we're looking at, but we're going to kind of rephrase our thinking um, away from that um, all of these kind of aspects of motion, you know, like displacement, velocity, acceleration, not just in terms of time, but also in terms of x, where it actually is, it's displacement. Um, before I get into the formula and, ha and how to apply it, I think it's just good to get some intuition why um, first of all, how that can come about and why that might be useful, right? So let me give you an example of an equation. So like, for example, let's take, actually, let's take our displacement. Let's say that is equal to sine t, right? And we know that its velocity would just be the derivative of that. So cos t, right? And then its acceleration again, we take the derivative again, and what's the acceleration? Negative sign, right? So you can already see, like, in a situation like this, where you have a, a trig function which models your equations of motion, it's very useful to say that, well, actually, the acceleration is also dependent on where it is, right? Because what's another way you could write acceleration? In terms of x. <laughs> what's that mean? <laughs> The negative x, right? So you can see, like, the idea is that you can actually, in a situation like this with uh, trig equations, you can actually model um, all of these in terms of not um, when the particle is, or but rather where the particle is, right? Um, so that, that's the kind of intuition that is, is kind of present. Um, another really good one is when we look at, like, light sources, right? So, for example, if you look at a light source, um, What's the relation between the distance and its intensity? Have you guys done that in physics? Inverse the inverse square law, right? So you can see, like, when I have my hand really close, the light's quite bright. But um, as I go further away, it doesn't look like it's linear, right? Like, I move a little bit, and then the intensity drops by quite a lot. Yeah. Um, this is also the um, relationship, um, supposedly, between um, gravity and distance, right? So, for example, the intensity of gravity is quite strong when you're you know, on the surface of the Earth because you're you know, closer to its core. Um, but as you go further and further away, that effect is a lot less. So can you start to see like, why it might be useful to think about these forces, not in terms of um, when along your journey you are, but where along the journey you are in relation to some kind of reference point? That's the kind of idea that we're looking at here um, in um, the forces and acceleration like skill. right? Um, I'm going to jump into some questions in a second, but I also want to talk about this, right? So this is given to you as a formula, and you can just apply it as you might see fit. And you can already see, like, we're already approaching this idea of using things in terms, um, not in terms of time, but in terms of x, right? So you can see you've got d dx half b squared. And you might be thinking, hey, hang on, why is there, like, derivatives of the velocity? Like, shouldn't velocity and acceleration, shouldn't I take the derivative to get to there, right? But remember, this is in terms of x here, right? And the key thing here is to think about, okay, if we want to sort of derive this, um, how does that kind of, kind of come about? Well, let's go to our normal equations. <clears throat> let's look at velocity and the relationship between velocity and acceleration. For example, acceleration is usually, um, well, it's the first derivative of velocity, right? So it's dv dt, yeah? Now, when you think about this, if I want to sort, sort of introduce x, and I have a single derivative here, how can I actually go about that? Is there a rule which I can introduce like two, like some other aspects? Like can I just introduce x somehow is the thing I'm thinking about. Because that's what I want to do. Ultimately, I want to end up with this guy here. But how can I go about doing that? I need a bit more space. I'm going to write over on the right side while you're thinking about that. <clears throat> So my goal is that I'm going to end up with something like this, something like in terms of x. But right now, there's no x's, like there's no dx's anywhere, right? But can I re rewrite this in such a way that I have dx's, but I um, don't really change the expression at all? Any thoughts? Um, I read something about using the 
chain you can, that's right. So your chain rule that you learn in year 11, uh, particularly when you're looking at like related rates in year 11, um, that was like a popular skill that we had to use a lot. So what you want, might want to think about is, okay, I want dv dt. So usually what we do is we construct something like this, right? But then we want these other variables to, you know, cancel out. And what did I say the variable we were trying to introduce was? It was dx, right? So dx is going to be the variable that you introduce. So variable didn't write, so it's like, yeah, right? <clears throat> but then you're looking at this, and I'm thinking, okay, I've got here uh, dv dx and dx dt, but fortunately, I've got something here d in terms of t, that's just your velocity, right? Because you think about your ladders of derivatives. Well, if you take the derivative of x with respect to time now, that's actually the same as velocity. Exactly right. So this is actually here, yeah, dv dx times v. Now, usually they write it with the, the v in front. So I'm just going to go away, put it over there. That's actually another one of the forms of acceleration that you can write it in. So v dv dx. Yeah. So what that's saying is you can take velocity and multiply it by its derivative, and then that will be the same as acceleration, in t if you're taking the derivative in terms of x, at least. Yep, okay. Um, but we haven't gotten to the first one that I kind of gave you, so what's going on there? Right, well, this is where you have to use a bit of uh, math and magic, because we want to try and think about how can I get a single derivative from this, right? And, and where does this like half v squared thing come from? Like, there's all these kind of weird things happening here, right? The idea is, like, what actually gets cancelled out here? Like, from looking at this one to this expression here. What's not there anymore? V out the front. Yeah, the v, so the V's gone away, right? Yeah. I'm assuming, uh, can we try it like a fraction? Like yeah. Well, what, what, what would you try? So think about like the relationship with some of this, like w w half v squared, like how, do, how might that work from just starting with v is, is kind of what I'm asking. Have a, have a, have a look and have a think. <clears throat> the key thing to look at, right, is the v's not there anymore, but also in this part over here, the, the, v's, not, the, the v's not there anymore, right? That, that, that's gone as well, yeah. So um, the kind of algebraic trick that they use is they say, okay, well, what if I took, um, what if I want to keep this as V, so what if I take the um, derivative of the primitive of that? So I'll say that again. So like, <laughs> I want to keep this as V, I don't want to change that, but I want to rearrange it in a different way, right? So that I can write it as a single derivative. Because remember, this is the goal over here. That's what I'm trying to get, right? So um, the trick that they use is say, okay, well, if I took the primitive of this, what's the primitive of this? V squared, v squared half v squared, which is hopefully looking a bit familiar here. But I want to keep that as v, so to speak. So I want to take the derivative of this again, which is, now, remember um, a distinction between like um, the derivative and taking the derivative as an operation. As If we're writing it as an operation, we write it like this, right? We're saying I'm applying the derivative to this expression. So I'm deriving this expression with respect to v, dv, yeah? And then so I've got this dv dx that remains here. But then what you notice is actually what happens, these two cancel out, right? Um, so we cheat a little bit because that, you know, that's like some uh, funky things going on. And then so we end up with what we were expecting to get, d dx half v squared, right? And so that's our expression now for acceleration just from my velocity, okay? So that's gonna be a really key part in answering the next couple of questions that we're looking at. Um, let that proof down because um, the proof itself is also examinable, um, but one thing that's good is that on your reference sheets, um, you actually have um, all four forms of velocity. So you're like, hey, what are the four forms? We only have two here. The other two are the ones in terms of time, right? So you know you have your normal one, which is uh, d, v dt, which is what we did up here. But that's also the same as the second derivative of my displacement function. So oh, I always get this confused. d2x, yeah, d2x dt squared. Yeah, okay. Okay, 
So um, these four kind of expressions here are on your formula sheet. So that means if you want to show or if you're asked to show or prove something, um, you are able to start from this and then work your way backwards. Yeah. So it is a bit hard to sort of generate the expression this, in this way, um, but there are proofs that actually go the other way as well. So like mass and focus, for example, will start from this expression here and then end up with that expression. That's one way to prove it. Let's look at an example. <coughs> 